I remember being very, very nervous about submitting my first story. I'd heard all kinds of horrible tales, like if the publisher really likes it, he'll uh, publish it himself and get the credit for it. All kinds of horror stories. And I sold my first story to Science Fiction Plus. It was a magazine that unfortunately had a short term, but and I got a thousand dollars for it, which was a cent a word, but uh, it was printed with my name on it. And that was just after my son Alec was born. And that was great stuff. I was lucky enough to get in on the original Damon Knight and Kate Wilhelm science fiction workshops. Damon thought we would get more money for our stories if we improved the product. So we were busy trying to figure out ways to improve our writing style and our subject matter. And the weekend was very intense, but you got a chance to uh, listen to what other people were writing and how they would defend their work against criticism. And I learned more actually from listening to all the other stories than I did from my own. I came out of a workshop situation and became a better writer. And that's what I think the Writers of the Future does, thanks to L. Ron Hubbard, who knew how hard it was to start off as a writer and has turned a lot of his earnings into a situation like this that will help others. They're given background information and encouragement, as well as practical interviews with publishers and editors and agents. I think the best thing that Writers of the Future teaches its contestants is the discipline of writing, which ain't easy. I mean, a lot of people could write a novel, but they don't have the discipline to sit down and do it. And that's always been my point to make to young people. It's a lot of work. It's very well worth it when you get a check in the mail or you see your name in print. But you have to sit down and get it done. And I used to work a 10-hour day, seven days a week. I'm a little slower now, <laughs> but I am 80. I used to be doing two and three books a time and working on another one in my head. <laughs> but you have to do it. There's nobody else who can do it for you. But if that's what you really want, go for it and don't let anybody stop you. That is something that the workshops teach them. For instance, they had to write a story, complete story, in uh, 24 hours based on some articles that Tim Powers showed them. And that's not a tough assignment. I've done that many times. But it is a discipline. You have to go to it. Then you get a chance to work with an illustrator who will illustrate the story you have submitted. And that's a big, big help. I remember when I saw the first of the dragon covers by Michael Whalen. Wow, is that what my dragons look like? The impact of Michael Whalen's covers made all the difference in the world, particularly with White Dragon. And I noticed in the cover for All the Wears of Pern, which is 14 years after the White Dragon, there is an obvious maturity in the faces of both the dragon and the rider. And I think, oh boy, he's cooking with gas. <laughs> And one time he called me up and he says, What's, wh what do you want on the cover of Renegades of Pern? And I said, well, I haven't written it yet. <laughs> but I said, it's going to be about the traveling folk. So big caravans with heavy set beasts to pull it and had the winding down the road. And he did. And the only thing I didn't get into the story was a little critter he had that was a, obviously a ground rodent. And I meant to put it in, but I never got around to it. <laughs> So the Writers of the Future contest is unique. It's just a remarkable thing that Ron Hubbard has done. He's left quite a legacy. And it's what we leave behind very often that's much more important than what we actually did. <laughs>